on uh, June the 10th, I believe it's Wednesday night at 6:30, and we're it, it, the other one. Uh, we will do that. We will do the other one. We just let you decide which one we do first. And then on June the 7th, we start a new series called How to Be Rich. Because who doesn't want to know how to be rich? So we did our Abundant Life series. Now we know how to have the Abundant Life. Now that we have the Abundant Life, we have to know how to live that Abundant Life. So with that being said, I want to thank everybody for coming in here to the Odyssey Church today. And I'm going to invite Tom Slaughter to come up and join us and minister to us in music. And with that, I want to invite Tom to come up and join us. Let's give him a round of applause. Good morning, church. Everybody's awake, smiling, bright-eyed, and bushy-tailed today. It's a beautiful day. This is a day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it because I can't make one any better. I don't know about you, but I can't make one any better. Amen. Oh, let me see if I can wake the band up this morning.
The world's a little different. When you say fishing for men, you better, you better clarify it. That's why I said men and women. Right. <laughs> You better be careful with that in today's world, too. Well, uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, June the 14th, very important day in our church uh, also. We are going to have a baptismal service. So any of you that would like to get baptized, please let us know what we would really like is if we could have baptism, baptismal service at both services, one at the 930 service and one at the 1115 service. So that would be great. We already have one family and their outreach family that has come forward and said, we'd like to be baptized. Woo! So we, amen, praise God. One of the reasons, Tom mentioned uh, today is, is a day, and when I got up here, I think I mentioned, but remember, I didn't have my notes, that today there's, there's three things that we're celebrating in our church. You know, the first thing was obviously Memorial Day. The second thing is, uh, let me ask, is there anybody here, and we don't normally do this, but I want to do it today, is there anybody here today whose birthday is today? contrast in the church. On the one hand, we celebrate Memorial Day, which is where we give honor to those who have died, particularly in the battle for our freedom. But today is also a day of life. Today is a day that we celebrate Pentecost. Pentecost is an important holiday in the church history. Now, if you, if you are just sort of seeking and you're not sure Jesus is who he says he is, maybe the day of Pentecost can be the final thing that convinces you. The fact is, Pentecost was actually predicted thousands of years before the day that we call Pentecost. For thousands of years, the Jewish nation celebrated something that, that happened to them as a exodus, as a exited Egypt. We call it Passover. And it simply means that the death angel passed over them. And the reason the death angel passed over them was because of the blood of a lamb. Now that's a historical fact. Christians, non-Christians can't deny it. That's been going on for thousands of years. But I remind you once again, I say this often because I, I just want everything we see is a spiritual picture or a, a, a physical picture of a spiritual truth. The death angel passed over because of the blood of the Lamb. And then at Easter, on the Passover, and now what are the odds of this happening? Jesus is crucified on Passover weekend. He's died and he's buried. And on the third day, he rises again. And now we have the opportunity to live life eternally, eternally, that, that, that we go on forever and ever because of the blood of the Lamb of Christ. But why this is so important is Pentecost means 50. Now, when you start looking at this, the odds of this happening are just so unbelievable, so or, or impossible almost. Jesus dies, 50 days later, the Holy Spirit, what we call Pentecost, comes upon the world. Now, Pentecost simply means 50. But for thousands of years, the Jews had been celebrating Passover. And then they would go into what's called the week of weeks. Seven times seven is 49. And on the 50th day, they would celebrate Shabbat. Or when the Greek come around, they would celebrate what we know as Pentecost. Now, this took place thousands of years before Jesus died, buried, and sent his Holy Spirit upon the world. The odds are just too unimaginable to think that this was by accident. That there had to be a creator. He gave us a spiritual picture, and then he gave, the, or gave us a physical picture, and then he gave us the reality and a spiritual truth. So we celebrate that. We celebrate what was predicted thousands of years ago. We celebrate Pentecost. So maybe today, maybe today, if you weren't sure before that through the power of the Holy Spirit, that you will realize that Jesus is exactly who he said he was. That he is not just the Son of God, but he is God himself, the second part of the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So with that being said, I'm going to uh, pray. 
and then we're taking offering for Tom, and then Tom's going to bring up and, and bring us the message. And but before we do, I got to check on my thing. Uh, Charles, how's that grill coming along? <laughs> All right, the coals are hot up. We're ready, ready to go. <laughs> See, that's the thing. The entire why we get along so good. You ain't never going to hear either one of us speak on God to me. Okay, this is the perfect church if you like it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Tom and his ministry. But Father, we thank you that we not only celebrate death today, but we can celebrate life, and not just life, but eternal life. Father, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that came on that day of Pentecost. Amen. Amen. Now, if you notice, I wore my Superman socks today. <laughs> my Superman socks are to remind me of the superpower of the Holy Spirit. Because if there was a battle between Superman and the Holy Spirit, then hands down the Holy Spirit would win. You know how I know that? Because Superman cannot bring anybody back from the dead. And the Holy Spirit does. Amen. And there ain't no kryptonite for the Holy Spirit, but there is for Superman. So uh, let's take the offering and then we'll ask Super Tom to come up here and minister to us. <laughs> and then you'll be Mr. Rich. Be a lawyer. They always seem to have money. Marry a guy named Rich and then you'll be Mrs. Rich. Hello. <laughs> My life insurance for your brother. You kill him.
drive to the casino, put all your chips on the table, and win big. Have a lot of pets, name them all money, then you have money, money, money. Come to the Odyssey for the new summer series on how to be rich. Money makes the world go around, the world go around, the world go around. Oh, good morning again, church. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. How many of you are familiar with the Waffle House? Oh, a lot of you. Good. Well, my promise to you today is I'll have you out of here before they close. <laughs> oh, wow. I said that to a church in Pennsylvania one time and everybody just sat there and looked at me. <laughs> they didn't have a Waffle House in that town. In fact, they didn't have one in the county. But uh, I will be sensitive to time. I know that uh, coals are hot ready to throw the chicken and the hot dogs and the hamburgers and whatever else he's got out there on the grill to fire it up. But I want to talk to you a little bit today on, uh, on Pentecost. Now before I get to Pentecost, I want to talk to you a little bit about Memorial Day. As Pastor Rob has already shared with you, he preached about half my sermon, so I'm going to skip that part and just get right to the meat and then we'll get out and eat and have lunch. But Memorial Day started as an event to honor Union soldiers who died during the Civil War. That's where it began. And after World War I, it was extended to include all men and women who died in any war or military action. It was originally known as Decoration Day. After World War II, it was renamed Memorial Day. It's always been May 30th, regardless of the day of the week. And then in 1968, the federal government got a hold of it and changed it to a holidays bill. Now, the federal holidays were designed to create a three-day weekend. Now, how many of you still in the working world enjoy those three-day weekends? Amen. Amen. And it's celebrated on the last Monday in May. I personally have an uncle. We have his picture on our wall. I come from a very active military family. I'm a U.S. Coast Guard veteran. Chief won't hold that against me. <laughs> First thing he said to me, and I hear it from everybody when I say U.S. Coast Guard, oh, I thought you had to be six foot two to be in the Coast Guard so you could walk ashore in case the ship sinks. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. <laughs> Not true. But uh, <laughs> my father was career army, retired after 28 years, and, and we have a military wall in our home for all of my family, my retirement certificates from my father, many in our family from U.S. Coast Guard service, many from Army, and my uncle who was killed in Korea. We have his picture. We have a letter from General Douglas MacArthur who mentioned God and faith and prayer for your family in this letter. And we have his purple heart. And every time I walk by, I absolutely, I think about that and think of the service that he gave. See, he's one of the ones that gave all so that we could have freedom in our country today. But going past that, there is one who gave all that we could have life and have it more abundantly. And that we could have salvation. And that we could have an eternity with God. And that we could have a, a place in heaven where all things are going to be beautiful now one of the things that i share with people about heaven is and i am so happy and ecstatic about this do you realize in heaven those of you who wear glasses we are not going to have to wear glasses in heaven amen, amen. amen. and i've had people wanted to debate that with me but glasses correct imperfect vision there is no imperfection in heaven 2020 vision. 
and I can lose these forever. And I will be so glad of that. <laughs> but as Pastor Rob shared, Pentecost meeting 50. Now, as you study in the, in the Old Testament, like the churches today, there was always a feast of some kind going on. There was a feast of unleavened bread. There was a feast of Passover. There was a first fruits feast. There was always eating going on. Very similar to the church today. You see, when we meet, we eat. Prime example, look out here in the yard. It's getting ready to happen today. And uh, if you turn with me in your Bibles to Acts chapter 1, I want to set the stage just a little bit for this. In Acts chapter 1, in verse 4 and 5. Now this is after Jesus was resurrected from the dead. And he is talking with, the, with his disciples. On one occasion, starting in verse 4, on one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Now, if you look at that scripture there, on one occasion while he was eating with them, this is after the resurrection, which means we're going to eat in heaven too. Amen. He's already got his glorified body. Yep. So we're going to be eating in heaven. Isn't that comforting? <laughs> I see a couple of you out there rolling your eyes going like, we will? Yeah, well, right it's scriptural. Amen or oh me, it's the word of God. See, that's the perfect part of my sermon today. There's part of my sermon today that is absolutely perfect. And that part is the Word of God. Amen. Everything else is subject to error. But in researching this, this is Scripture. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water... But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, moving over to Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost, beginning in verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. You see, they were all gathered together in one mind and one accord, praising and worshiping God. Now, imagine, and this church I'm sure is no different than any church that we've been in, and we've been in churches all over the country. To get everybody in the church in one mind and one accord is next to impossible. We can't even agree most of the time on what color we want the carpet to be when it's put down. But they were all in one mind and one accord. And he told them to wait in Jerusalem for the promise. The promise being the Holy Spirit. And that they had, would have power to be witnesses in Jerusalem all Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit would give them power to be witnesses. Now, as I said, there was 120 gathered in the upper room. And research has told me that this is either a house or the temple. And if it wasn't the temple, at least the house was relatively close to where the temple was. But 120. And then there was a sound from heaven that came like a violent rushing wind, and tongues of fire separated over each one of them. And 120 were filled that day with the power from on high by the Holy Spirit. And the people around began to laugh and say, oh, they're drunk. And Peter stood up and said, men, it is only the third hour. Now understanding in those days, the day began at 6 a.m. So it was 9 o'clock in the morning. They're not drunk with wine. These men are drunk with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit has come upon them and given them the power that God has promised. And on that day, as he preached, if you'll go to, uh, say in Acts chapter 2, Peter stood up and preached, raised his voice to the crowd, starting in verse 14. 
Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. If you have read the scripture in Joel chapter 2, Joel says, in the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And you see it happening today all over the place. People who are hungry for God, who are searching for truth, who are, are, are digging in and, and hunkering down for the word of God. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Not might be, not could be, not eh, we'll see. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And as Peter preached that day, there were 3,000 people that came to Christ that were saved that day on one sermon one sermon. And I've heard it said that we were closer to evangelizing the entire world back then than even we are today with multimedia and the way that, that we can broadcast preaching all over the world via satellite. But because of, of, of the population and everything's here. You see, Jesus had to return to the Father so that he could send the comfort. Now, the comforter in the Greek, which is parakletos, paraklete meaning he is one called alongside to help. And how many of you know today that we need help? Even in our Christian walk, we need help. There are things that, that, that come against us. I've seen more people today attacked with just stuff in their lives than I have ever seen in all my years. And we need a help. We need a comforter. We need one that will come alongside us and, and, and help us and be there for us. He came and sent the Holy Spirit. Now my question to you today is where does the Holy Spirit fit into your life? Turn with me, if you will, to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. First Corinthians 10, chapter 13. The Word of God says that there's no temptation that sees you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Now, I have been in so many situations where I knew that I was about to be in something I had no business being in. And I have literally cried out to God, literally cried out for the Holy Spirit that went alongside me to help me, to make me a way of escape or a way out. And God has never not done that. He makes a way of escape. But so many times today, church, People do not want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and, 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 and I've been guilty. I've been guilty in my early walk that it looked good, it felt good, it must be okay, and it wasn't. It wasn't. I needed to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to work and speak to my heart and move me and get me out of that situation. See, Pentecost is very important to the church today. We were coming out of our development today, and a friend of ours lives a couple of doors down. He walks his dog. I'm going to guess Conrad is in his 70s. And this man walked his dog every day. Rain, shine, dead of winter, snow, sleet. Every day he walks that dog for almost an hour. 
we were coming out of the neighborhood today and, and I stopped and spoke to him and he said, where are y'all at today? I said, we're in Selbyville. And um, I shared with him his Pentecost Sunday. And he said, I haven't heard that phrase since I was a Catholic. He is now a, a tender, great born again man, believer in God. But he attends a, a small little Baptist church over in Seaford. And he said, they never ever speak about Pentecost. I said, it's the birthday of the church. This is, this is the day the church was born. When the Holy Spirit came, the church was birthed. Pentecost Sunday is. And it doesn't matter whether you're a Baptist or Methodist or Catholic, Episcopalian, Lutheran, Pentecost, it doesn't matter. Pentecost is important. It is that 50th day. But so many times today, things are ignored. Now, Pastor Rob said something to me that, that triggered something in my spirit. You see, the pulpits today, there, there are many tools that we can use today, especially in the 21st century. We have social media today, and I understand that y'all use Facebook, and a church solid like this, that is a great tool to use. There are many great tools today. But the primary tool today that is number one in all the tools that we use today is still preaching the Word of God. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word, of God. the Word of God. The Word of God. And Pastor Rob said something that triggered in my spirit. If you're a new believer today in Christ, I encourage you to do everything within your, within your power to find out that God is who He says He is. That Jesus Christ is who He says He is. And that the Holy Spirit is who He says He is. He is not a thing or an it. It is a person. As Pastor Rob said, He is the third person in the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. One God existed in three persons. But put that to rest. Know that He is God. Know that He is who He says He is. And it's by faith. By faith. I did not see one person come in the room today and get down on your knees and look underneath these chairs to make sure that they would hold you. You just came in and sat down. Amen. By faith. Yep. By faith. You sat down in that chair believing by faith, that chair would hold you. And it's by faith we are saved. Not by works. You can't earn it. There's nothing you can do to earn it. It is by faith. By faith. Decide that God is who He says He is. Exhaust the avenues. I love it that you have good Bible studies. I love it that you have two services now on Sunday morning. That speaks of growth. That speaks of growth. And, and, and I'll, I'll put Pastor Rob on the spot here. Sunday night services. I love Sunday night services. A lot of churches are getting away from Sunday night services. But I was, when I was a kid coming up, Sunday night services were where people just came and relaxed and in, in, in the Holy Spirit and, and, and just let their hair down. And God showed up and He showed off. And oh my, the services that we had. I only put pressure on your Pastor Rob. <laughs> but he can do that on Sunday mornings as well. As well. But don't put the Holy Spirit in a box. Pentecost Sunday is important. It's important. It is the birthday of the church. And as we sing happy birthday to people that we know who are celebrating birthdays, maybe sometime let that filter through your mind that Jesus today is the birthday of your church. Not the name of the church that's over the door. Not the Methodist church. Not the Baptist church. It is the church of Jesus Christ. It is the body of Christ. And church, when we hurt, when one hurts, we all hurt. When one is sad, we're all sad. Lift each other up. Encourage one another. I love it that 
Folks, I just I dress like this everywhere I go. I just figure I, I won't offend anybody anywhere if I'm in a suit. Believe me, I love it that you come casual, that you come comfortable. You see, God looks at your hearts. He doesn't look at what's on your back. That doesn't matter. That does not matter. God is looking for people today who want to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And if you're there in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, God's still looking at the heart. The heart. The heart. And that is what is important today. So with, with that said, I shared with the church, Pastor Rob, I think you had gone outside, that uh, you laid all the groundwork, you took half my sermon, but that's okay. That's okay. See, we're all in this together. Just cool. I looked at Debbie. I said, he just preached half my sermon. She said, good. Well, you can cut it short then. <laughs> and, uh, I asked Pastor Rob, I said, uh, how long do you guys normally go? He said, about an hour and a half. I like to be sensitive to time. Now, understand if the Holy Spirit begins to move, I'm going to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to step out of the way and allow the Holy Spirit to have his way and his will because it's his church. But it's, it's important that they tell me the mind can only absorb what the backside can endure. Now, these are comfortable chairs. I realize that. But you can only sit and absorb for so long. Amen. But I want to close out today. With maybe there is someone here today that doesn't know this Jesus that I've been singing about. Now understand, there was a message in every song I sang. And I shared with this with Pastor Rob the first time I met him. And this is, what, four or five years ago? Six years ago, maybe. If it is not scripturally based, I'm not singing it. Because I'm not here to entertain I'm not here to sing songs that will make you feel warm and fuzzy. I am here to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ, whether I'm preaching or whether I'm singing. And if it is not scripturally based, I don't sing it. But maybe you have never had a one-on-one -on -one personal encounter with this Jesus that I've been singing about today, that I've been preaching about today, who sent his Holy Spirit to birth the church. Maybe you've been tossing it around for a while. Maybe you've been attending church. I don't know. I don't know anyone here. I know a couple of faces, but for the most part, I don't know any of them. But maybe you have never made that personal commitment. Number one, I can promise you it will be the greatest thing you will ever do in your entire life Amen. is make that commitment to Christ Jesus. And I want to tell you today that everyone in this room has an appointment with death. You are not going to get around it. There is no uh, Supreme Court judge that will get you off. There is no silk-suited, slick-tongued lawyer that can get you acquitted. Everyone will face death. The issue with that is we don't know when it's going to be. We have no idea. A friend of ours just lost a son who was 17 years old. 17 years old. You could live to be a hundred. You don't know. But if you put to rest the issues of what happens after this life, and then you live your life for Christ, He is the one that can give you victory. He is the one that can give you freedom in Christ Jesus. He is the one who knew you before you were ever formed in your mother's womb. He knew you then. He will know you after you leave this life. But where you spend eternity is totally and completely up to you. Or maybe you are here today and you are just going through more stuff in your life. <coughs> pressure. Peer pressure. Things of the world that are closing in around you. Maybe marital problems. Maybe financial problems. Maybe emotional problems. Jesus is still the great physician. He is still a healer. I have seen him perform miracles. I have seen people in wheelchairs come out and walk because of Jesus. I have seen people delivered from problems and issues in life because of Jesus. I want to put on some soft, 
altar music today. And maybe, maybe today God's been dealing in your heart and it's decision making time. Maybe it's time to offer Jesus your heart. We don't know what tomorrow brings. God forbid there could be someone in this room today that will not live to see the sun go down. I hope that is not the case, but we don't know. You see, I have made that provision. I have made preparation for that time because I know unless I go by the rapture that I will go by way of the grave. But I want to know that there's hope and that there's life beyond the grave. It doesn't end there. That is the beginning if you're a child of the King. If Christ Jesus is in your heart, that is the beginning, not the end. I want to open these altars today as the music plays softly. Just some old hymns of the church, what I believe is to be some of the most solid music in the Christian world today. I love the old hymns of the church. I love singing them. I love listening to them because it, there's meat there. There's meat that can touch the hearts of people today, no matter where you're at in life. So if you're here today with burdens on your heart, or maybe you're here today and you want to make that commitment to Christ Jesus, step out from where you are right now. I want to pray over this congregation. But while I'm praying, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart, do not hesitate. Step out. And I'm going to tell you right up front, don't you dare worry about what someone else might think because you come to an altar. It ain't nobody else's business. It is between you and God. Amen. For whatever it is, whether it's salvation, whether it's ministering to your heart for something you're going through in life, maybe a burden that's on your heart, maybe a burden for someone who is, who is sick, who is dealing with something that, that, that's life-threatening. Do not be discouraged today. Step out from wherever you are. Heavenly Father, I come, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Because your word says, number one, there's no other name whereby men can be saved. No other name. There's no other name whereby men can be healed. There is no other name where we can be comforted. Lord, I ask today that you would move across this congregation and that by your Holy Spirit, that you would make real, Lord, to the people who are here, that God is alive, God is well, and he's still on the throne, and that he loves you. He loves you. You are important to him. Lord, touch hearts today. Minister to hearts. Lord God, wherever we're at in life, Lord, that you would come and touch and be that one called alongside to him. I won't labor much longer. Maybe you're here today. Maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart. Maybe God is calling you. Maybe God is calling you to the ministry today. Maybe God's been dealing with your heart. I don't know. God knows. And you know. Do not, do not allow him to pass you by today. For today is the day of salvation. Today is the day. Heavenly Father, again, I thank you, Lord, and I praise you that today you've allowed your servant to come and share the word of God. Lord, both in song and in preaching. Lord God, that you would touch and bless each one that is here today. Lord God, that you would open yourself to them, that you would be real, and that you would lift them up from wherever they are, Lord God. Lord, I know today is a different world than what it was when I was a young man. But Lord, you haven't changed. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You do not change. And Father God, it is so comforting today to know that there is something in this world, there is something we can hold on to today.
that doesn't change, that isn't phased out by the new, great, and latest thing. Lord, but you were there. You are the same. You never, ever change. Father, I pray that you would pour your anointing out over this church. Lord, that you would anoint the pastor here. Lord, that you would give him power from on high through the Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, that you would continue to open his heart to the truth of your word. Lord God, that this church would grow. Lord, because of your spirit, your love, your mercy, your grace. And Lord, we will be quick to give you all of the praise and the glory and the honor. For you, Lord, alone are worthy. We ask it all in the precious and holy name of our Savior and our Lord, Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you all for coming today. Um, at the end of Acts chapter 2, beginning of that verse 42, uh, the subtitle of my uh, Bible says, the community of believers. See, as believers, we form a community and we strengthen each other. And one of it says is we come together in community, we come together in fellowship, and I love the last part, we come together to eat. So, <laughs> so I'm going to pray for the food so you don't have to wait on me, you can eat right away. And uh, we ask that the Lord bless you, that you go today in His power, that you have His peace, and we all know we have His blessings. Father, we ask today as we leave here, Lord, that you give us the strength of the Holy Spirit, that we're reminded today is the birthday of the church. Yes. And Father, as we celebrate, as we go outside and we communicate and we fellowship together, that you would bless the food, that you would let it nourish our body, that you would give us the strength in our human ability so that we can go out in your strength and your Holy Spirit to witness to the world, to let them know about this Jesus that loves them so much. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. God bless you all. Let's go outside and eat.